Good morning, Michelle. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us for this Eucharistic service this morning. Today is Trinity Sunday, and as I take my mask off, you might be able to hear me a lot better. So welcome, and thank you for being part of this service today. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Praise the Lord. Praise him, you servants of the Lord. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his name, now and forever. We say the Gloria. Glory, Glory to God, God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. In a time of quiet, let us confess our sins. Let us firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with our neighbor. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault in thought, word and deed and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. God the Father just loves it when a sinner turns from their sin and comes and asks for forgiveness. And what an opportunity this is for all of us. So as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, I say to you, if you've truly repented, you will be forgiven. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon your sins and set you free from them, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We say our collect prayer for the morning this morning, which is a Trinitarian prayer. God of unchangeable power, you revealed yourself to us as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Keep us firm in this faith, that we may praise and bless your holy name. For you are one God, living and reigning in glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We turn now to the reading for the day. Listen to the good news proclaimed in the Gospel of John, chapter 3, starting at the first verse. Glory to Christ our Saviour. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the miraculous signs you are doing if God were not with him. In reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. How can a man be born when he is old? Nicodemus asked. Surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born? And Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. 
How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and you do not understand these things. I tell you the truth, we speak of what we know and we testify to what we have seen, but still you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things, and you, do, and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. This is one of the most affirming pieces of scripture that can ever be read. John 3.16, we know it so well. I think even if you go and see sometimes at a big sports event, you see people with John 3.16 waving their placards uh, about. And it's just amazing. But I just love the interaction that Jesus has with Nicodemus. He doesn't uh, diss him. He doesn't <laughs> make him, he doesn't belittle him in any, any way, but he engages him just where he is. And he kind of yeah, explains what it is and, and what he came for. And that's just it's so profound. Uh, because yes, we are born of water. Every, every person that's been born has been born of water. I mean, that's a, that's a natural thing when we get born. But to be born of the Spirit is just something special. When your spiritual eyes awaken, your spiritual eyes open, and your heart softens, and, and you just connect with God. It's just such a wonderful opportunity. And to hear that scripture again, which means so much to so many people, um, yeah, it's just wonderful. But many of us also like the next verse which is that I came to save the world. And that's what Jesus' mission was. And now Jesus sits at the right hand of God interceding for you and for me. Amen. And as one of my Methodist friends always says, it's almost as if uh, Jesus smuggles you a sinner with his arms around you into the presence of God, in the presence of the Father, because of the blood that he shed on the cross so many years ago. Amen. So what a wonderful Savior we have. So bless you. Amen. Go and read it again. Uh, John 3.16 and let it go and loop around your head for the next while as well. But bless you. We're now going to say the baptismal creed. It's one of the most Trinitarian creeds that we have. And so we'll say that this morning. I believe and trust in God the Father who made the world. I believe and trust in His Son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed humankind. I believe and trust in His Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God. I believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, as we come before you and acknowledge you again as our Lord and Savior, just speak into our hearts now, Lord Jesus. Receive our prayers. We pray particularly this morning as we come before you just for those who are on our pew leaflet and those who are struggling at the moment. Mm -hmm. We pray for Rob Phillips, Von Tinley, Jeff Woods, Dave Cunahan, Greg Smith, Jill Smith, Sinjin Hunt, Di McDermott, Marlene Colleen, Eden Riley, Brian Anderson, Anne Wilson, Di Mason, Clive Gage, Joan Aaron Evans, Bishop Eric Pike, and Margie Anderson. Mm -hmm. Father, we lift them all up to you and those that you know as well in your hearts and you've been carrying in your hearts for a long time. Father, we lift them to you. I know it's a, an extensive list. And so, Lord, we bring them to you this morning. Amen. Amen. We're now going to pass the peace. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Peace, peace be, be with, with you. you. Peace be with you. We're now going to celebrate Holy Communion. And we're going to use the first Eucharistic prayer this morning.
In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Watch me clean, O Lord, and renew a right spirit within me. I was pleased when they said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. Mm-hmm. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. For us it becomes the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. For us it becomes the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The first Eucharistic prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right indeed our duty and joy, Lord and Heavenly Father, God Almighty and Eternal, always and everywhere, to give you thanks through to Christ Jesus our Lord. Because through him you have created everything from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you delivered us from the slavery of sin when you gave him to be born as man, to die on the cross and to rise again for us. Through him you claimed us as your own people when you enthroned him with you in heaven. And through him you sent out your Holy Spirit, the giver of life. Therefore the angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we acclaim you and declare the greatness of your glory. We praise you now and forever saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hear us, Father, through your Son, Christ our Lord, and through him accept our offering of thanks and praise. And send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, so they may be to us his body and his blood. For on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So to after supper, Jesus took the cup. And after giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink of us, all of you, for this is the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, you do this in remembrance of me. So we acclaim the victory of Christ. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Holy Father, with these your gifts, we your people celebrate before you the one perfect sacrifice of Christ our Lord. He is rising from the dead and is ascending to the glory of heaven. Gracious Lord, accept us in him, unworthy though we are, so that we are share in the body and blood of your Son, may be made one with all your people of this and every age. Grant that as we await the coming of Christ our Saviour, in the glory and triumph of his kingdom, we may daily grow into his likeness, with whom and in whom and through whom, by the power of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour be given to your mighty Father, by the whole company of earth and heaven, throughout all ages, now and forever. Amen. We say the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The bread which we break is not a share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Give us your peace. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, But in your manifold and great mercies, we are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs from under your table. But you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. So grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. The 
the body of Christ. The blood of Christ. So I give thanks to the Lord, for He is gracious. His mercy endures forever. Almighty and eternal God, we thank you for feeding us in these holy mysteries with the body and blood of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and for keeping us by your grace in the body of your Son, the company of all faithful people. Help us during this time of pandemics and COVID to persevere as living members of that holy fellowship and to grow in love and obedience according to your will through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Well, join me now in the dangerous prayer as we depart from here. Father, Father Almighty, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out into the world in the power of the Holy Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Dearly beloved, may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. So, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. In the name of Christ, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. But before we go, let me just share with you quickly the birthdays. Today's birthday is Julie Andrew, Leanne Pasquale, Jolene Kahn, Pam Long, Stephen Harty during the week, Angela Grant, Barry Green on Wednesday, Michael Wallace on Thursday, Marcel Thomas on Friday, John Moorcroft and Tristan Collett are on Saturday. And then it's Willem and Gail Duplessis' wedding anniversary on Tuesday, as it is St. John and Stella Hunt. I'm sure they've been married a long, long time. And then also Colin and Lorraine Bentley, who've also been married a long, long time, celebrate on Wednesday. So bless you and bless them in this week ahead. Mm.